Hello and welcome to One More Pen. Today I am finally doing those Pelican ink swatches that I've been talking about and I have quite a few to look at. Um, I recently acquired these and I, I can't wait to see what some of these inks are like. I've been using some of them but uh, I haven't used all of them so there might be some surprises. So really looking forward to that. Uh, if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing. Uh, I really do appreciate that. So I have some um, some inks here. Um, the blue and the black I bought quite a while ago. I actually bought them when I was traveling in Kenya. And then recently I found um, quite a few of the other inks. And so I, I've used one or two of them, but not, not all of them yet. So we can have a closer look at that today. Uh, you may by this time realize that this is actually a voiceover. Um, when I did the video, I had an enormous amount of background noise and I, I couldn't really use the original, which is why it's taken me so long to put this out. Um, so I hope this is okay, but let me know in the comments how you experience this kind of sound. To do the swatches, I'll be using those Weringal, um cards and I also have a endless creative block. And I like to use both of them, two different kinds of paper. So they do, they do provide slightly different um, experiences of the inks. And I'll be using my Rohrer and Klingner Gloss Dip Pen as usual. I really like this pen. Um, if you haven't used the Gloss Dip Pen before, they, they're really nice if you just want to taste an ink um, or something because they're so easy to clean off and it's really surprising how much ink the um, well it's not a nib but the the tip of the pen how much ink the grooves really hold you can actually do quite a bit of writing and they're not expensive either I I thought these would be quite expensive now you can pay uh, quite a bit for them but generally they're not expensive pens so we have we'll be looking at the at the brilliant black um i've compared that to some of my other black inks like my um, parker queen black schaefer black um, i also have some diamond black inks and i'm always surprised at how well the pelican inks perform well i shouldn't be surprised it's it's a really excellent brand so it's it's not that that i expected it wouldn't perform um but I, yes, I just I just really enjoy these inks. So if we have a closer look, you can see it's it's it feels like it's a really uh, well saturated ink. I feel like it's very well lubricated. Um, it's not uh, it's like some of my other inks. It's not dry or anything like that. So it provides for a very pleasant and smooth writing experience. And on the endless uh, paper, it goes on really well. So we'll, we'll do a swatch there. And with the first pass, the ink looks um, almost a little, little gray, a little brown. But on the second swatch, you'll see a much deeper black. And definitely a, a brown tint, which um, I actually quite enjoy. Um, I do love brown inks and I don't have many of them and uh, they're not easy to find either. I mean there are a few around but uh, I don't know where I am they're not that easy to get hold of. But I have a few nice ones. So let's look at the Weringal, um paper. It's more of a card though it's not it's not thin paper at all but it's very nice for this kind of thing and we do the swatch a little bit more ink there gives us an idea of what a uh, perhaps a wetter pen or a broader nib would produce as opposed to a thinner nib or a drier uh, nib uh, in terms of the ink and um, if we do the writing sample there Again, I think you can see how really smooth, saturated that ink is. It compares very well with any of my other black inks 
um, so I don't I don't hesitate to use it. I think it's a it's a pretty good standard black. There we go. All right. So the glass the pen just a joy to use as well and it's so easy to clean very quick and easy to clean after uh, each ink so it makes it a, um, a natural choice for doing swatches and uh, writing samples so we put the black ink away and we have a look at the royal blue now these these are larger bottles uh, they are 62 mils and um, the newer inks that I've found are actually much smaller bottles I think they're about 30 mils and I actually really like the small bottles it's they're, they're kind of cute and um, I think they just you know once I emptied them um, I'll, I'll be reusing them definitely because they they're really very nice so this is also an ink that I've used um, I bought the blue and the black a while ago so I have been using these inks and been comparing them with some of my others and like I said they do really well this ink as well as you can see it's it's a really uh, deep blue um, and partly because the ink the pen provides a really uh, wetter nib experience it's what a really wet nib I suppose would uh, would look like but it gives us a really good idea of the of the real color of the ink so we'll do a swatch there and once again the first pass gives us an idea of you know the really dry sort of a dry nib what that would look like and there we get the really nice blue and uh, some darker color there as well so that's the endless paper uh, very nice I use the the endless a5 journals quite a lot they are really excellent uh, if I can find the journals with without a dot grid or um, all the lines I really like them to be blank and they're a little harder to find but I, I find that they're just really excellent to use so on the wearing goal paper um, we do a sample as well and uh, we can see that this is just really excellent paper to use so uh, I actually look forward to testing out some of their other paper products as well and if we do a swatch of the ink we get a nice idea of what this ink can look like it's a very um, it's a very deep saturated blue and it's very nice to use it compares well with some of my other blue inks so um, I think it's I would say it's a very much an in-between ink uh, I have some other blue inks that are much lighter and I have other blue inks that are a lot darker as well and this is a, a good balance so this is the turquoise um, I this is one I haven't used before I don't have this currently inked up in any of my pens but as we remove the cap we see some sheen already um, that's formed there so uh, this gives us a hint of what this ink might look like uh, on paper so on the endless paper it goes on uh, very nice and wet uh, I do enjoy a wet nib and it's a uh, it's also quite I think quite quite a saturated ink reminds me somewhat of the Iro Suzuku Konpeki I think the Konpeki might be a little bit lighter but I I think it's uh, it's comparable 
to that ink. Um, and although I'm not, I'm not really a fan of Konpeki, um, I find the ink to be a little dry. I think it can be a little dry. Uh, I feel that the Pelican is actually uh, very smooth and actually provides me with a better writing experience. Now, I know that there are some Iro Shizuka fans who will say, no, no, that cannot be, and who really enjoy the Konpeki. I, I enjoy Konpeki too, but I do find that it, it's not the best ink for all of my pens. Uh, if I use Konpeki, it has to be an, in a pen with a wet nib. Um, so a broad nib or a stub nib, it works very well. On the wearing gold paper as well, very consistent um, experience in writing. Very smooth, it's, it's, it's a beautiful ink uh, to use. And we'll do a swatch there as well. As the camera struggles to focus here and there. And we can really see the ink drying on the on the English paper and it's uh, some lovely shading developing there already. All right, next up we have the blue black. I do enjoy blue black inks. I have diamond blue black. I think I have Schaefer. Um, oh, I can't remember what else, but I, but I have a few others. So these are, and the Pelican one is uh, definitely uh, one of the better ones. Um, I really enjoy what it what it provides. So I, I didn't notice a lot of sheen on the cap there. So probably probably not a lot. These inks tend to not have a whole lot of sheen or shading. Um, they can be very flat, but it is also you know part of what what i enjoy about them this is quite a quite a dark blue black i mean they're they're all darker um that's the whole point but i find this one to be um still have a very nice blue tint to it sometimes these inks can be more of a gray like a blue gray than anything else and i do enjoy that it is um still very blue but it has a, a really dark it has that dark black um element to it as well so on the first pass it actually looks like any other blue ink um, but as we um, have more ink there we can see the i suppose the black uh, shining through a little bit This is an ink that I really enjoy for work um, because it's not, it doesn't stand out too much, but it's still a joy to use. I think it still looks really good. Um, so I think this is a, a safe ink uh, for use at work. The wearing gold paper again, uh, just very nice to use. So this is this is a this is more of of a card than um paper like like the endless but it provides a slightly different experience so it's it's a good uh, way to compare them and the, i think the color of the of the ink is very nice like i said it's not a dull blue black like some of the other inks it's still it keeps some uh, vibrancy i suppose so it's still a beautiful blue um, sometimes I just enjoy also having the, the blacked out, um, but this one is really nice. So we have a look at the dark green. It's interesting for me that it's a dark green and not a um, green black. I do have some green black inks like uh, Diamine, and um, the Diamine one is really, really nice. So... I suppose that there is a difference. I don't know, you could maybe uh, let me know in the comments what would be the difference between a really dark green and a uh, green black ink. But as you can see, this one is quite dark. Um, 
and I really do enjoy that. It's not uh, washed out in any way, it doesn't look grey or dull. Um, it keeps its really green quality and uh, this is what I really like about it. We're going to do a swatch of the ink and it has an interesting shine when it goes on the first time, very very light, uh, almost have a, a blue tint to it somewhat. Um, but then on the second pass we see the dark in the green uh, coming out really nicely. So it's an ink that provides really nice shading um, as well. So it's a it's an ink that I enjoy using in a broader nib uh, because of that. Although I think you could just as well use it with a with a fine nib. I think the darker colors do. Generally, I use the darker inks in my fine pens and the uh, the lighter inks in my broad nibs as a general rule. But um, some inks do well no matter you know what pen or nib you use. Uh, on the wearing gold paper again it's uh, it's very nice the green is not too dark although it's a dark green like I said it's not it's not washed out um, you don't lose the green quality of the ink at all which um, I do appreciate about this one it's a fairly unique green for me I, I don't have many green inks, but I do have um, green black inks and this is not as dark. It's still very much green, uh, if you understand what I'm saying. And so uh, it it's a very nice green when you want it to be slightly darker, but not necessarily want that uh, green black. All right, this is an interesting one brilliant red and I don't know if the lighting does justice to how this ink shines in uh, the sunlight it's a very it's a very bright red although here it I suppose it looks a little bit um, almost a little bit orange and I think you will see that 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 is a quality that um, that you see in this ink it's not a dark red and I guess that's why it's called uh, Brilliant Red. Um, but it's a very vibrant color. Um, it's uh, how can I exp explain it? It's um, yeah. It's 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 not a it's not a deep red. It's not a dark red. It has a an almost orange pink, I suppose, quality to it. And it already when I just look at that writing sample I can see some shading and so it's it's a very pleasant ink to use um, the first pass of the ink swatch you could probably see a pink tint there um, which is interesting and now it looks a lot more orange actually on the second pass so this is an interesting read depending on um, how broad and wet your nib is I think you will get quite a big variation uh, of color and shading from this ink and that makes it a very uh, very nice ink to use because you can get a lot out of it on the wearing gold paper um, I, I don't really experience a big difference in from the wearing gold to the English paper when I use it they there's, there's perhaps a little bit difference in how the shading develops but these are both really excellent um, papers and um, they're just nice to use and, and they provide very consistent experiences so again on the swatch here you, you can see a pink orange quality um, like I said it's a, it's a vibrant red but definitely not dark and you can easily mistake it for a yeah, for an orange uh, pink kind of an ink it's it's unique in that way I do have 
pink inks and uh, which I'll show you in a second and it's definitely not pink but when you when you compare it to a pink ink it you you will see that it's not pink but on its own it definitely has that quality so here we have a brown ink uh, it's called brilliant brown and it's one of the few brown inks that I have and I do really enjoy this one and Interestingly, this ink is very close to um, one of my Iro Shizuku inks. My Iro Shizuku Yuyaki is an orange ink. And although this is definitely not orange, when I started using it for the first time, it, it, uh, I recognized um, that this is actually very close to the Yuyaki. So, it, this is not an orange, it's a brown, but it's very close to Yuyaki. I've used both inks next to each other on, on the same uh, paper, and I don't know if you would easily be able to tell the difference if you don't know which ink is which. But when you do an ink swatch, the difference becomes um, very clear, but... It, just with the writing sample it's not that clear they are actually very close and you may be able to see the sort of very orange quality to this ink very close to the Hiro Suzuki Yuyaki and that's kind of nice because I do enjoy the Hiro Suzuki uh, it's an ink I've used in many of my pens and I think uh, particularly uh, some of my platinum pens I've used yuyaki and it's it just works really really well it's a very uh, lubricated um, ink and it provides really nice shading so on the wearing gold paper here um, if we zoom in a little bit you do see some shading already uh, in the writing sample and when this ink dries it's even more prominent and so this is a very nice ink to use with a broader nib where you can really appreciate some of the qualities of this color when we do the swatch and we do a second pass i think you can start to see um well already on the on the endless uh, you can see the shading developing there not much of a sheen um on this ink but the shading very quickly um you know you can see that developing and it looks really good i think definitely one of my favorite inks um i use this one with a broad nib uh, i've used it in my twist eco with a broad nib and that's a really lovely writing experience now the the two inks that i have left um these are two inks that i bought not expecting really to use them um, i'm not crazy about violet or purple inks and i'm not crazy about pink either and i i bought them because they were available and i thought well they will go nicely in the collection but probably not inks that i'll be using that much but it turns out that these are actually very very nice inks to use and i've i've inked up some pens with them and i'm using them more than some of my other inks so this was quite a surprise for me so we here we have the violet and the violet reminds me very much of um the sort of purple violet ink you used to get when you stamped documents i don't know if that's still around if that is still a thing but it just um it just jogs my memory to that it's it's a really lovely color uh, i really enjoy it it provides Beautiful shading, um, very saturated. So if we do an ink swatch, um, it goes on really smoothly. It's not a it's not a dry ink at all. And uh, there you can see just how nice that that ink the the shading. You can already see some shading developing on the edges. Uh, very nice. all right so time to do the uh, comparison on the wearing call paper and uh, 
I got these um, templates. It, 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 it came in uh, A4 sheets and I had to cut them out to do it like this. Otherwise, you would, you would be, yeah, you know, not be able to do one writing sample at a time and you would be seeing all of the writing samples and I think that would just be distracting. But anyway, so the swatch on the wearing gold paper, um, very similar to the endless. It, the, again, this, the, the, the papers do have different qualities and they both um, are just so lovely for bringing out the, the deeper qualities of the ink and um, any shading. Uh, this ink also not much sheen that develops, but we will have a closer look at them in a minute. And once they dry it, we will see uh, what they really look like. But uh, I actually inked up my um, Faber-Castell grip with this ink. And um, yeah, I, I recently did a review on the Faber-Castell and um, the first uh, grip that I bought was really not a good one and I got a second one that I did a review on and it's it's really nice so here we have the pink ink it's my first pink by the way I, it's not an ink that I would normally buy uh, it's not it's not a color that I'm particularly crazy about but there's something about this ink um, it's really a surprise to use it it's a very bright um, saturated but really bright pink uh, it stands out and there's something about it um, that I just really enjoy it very, very smooth uh, to use uh, we're slightly out of focus there but I think you can see on the first pass there on the uh, swatch it it's, uh, looks a little light but the moment you uh, add a little bit more ink you can see the uh, very vibrant um, it, it has a uh, it's not it's not a light pink so it's uh, I think a very it's it's an ink that reads very well it's, it's very legible very easy to see so it's not a it's not a washed out color at all and uh, we can do the comparison on the wear and goal um, no need to dip the gloss pen again uh, because it can do quite a bit of writing with the amount of ink it holds in, on the tip there. I didn't think I would do a lot of writing with a pink but I'm, I've actually found that I'm doing a lot of journaling with it. Uh, I keep notes of all my meetings and discussions etc that I have in my work and so I do a lot of writing there and I've actually been using uh, this combination of the pink with my Faber-Castell grip quite a bit and it's a very very pleasant sorry I made a mistake the the violet I'm using with my Faber-Castell the pink is in my Twisby Eco with a broad nap uh, sorry about that but with a broad nib and a twisty eco, it works really well. So we've done all of the swatches. I let the inks dry and we have a closer look at them now. The black, you can see um, shading around the edges. Not that much, but a little bit of sheen that's developed there. Uh, especially on the endless paper. Uh, I think it, it, it's quite uh, easy to see there. We move on to the royal blue. Really nice shading and sheen. Um, this is definitely an ink that's a pleasure to use. Um, even even on the writing, you can see the shading on the edges there. The blue black turns out to be really really dark. Um, definitely some beautiful sheen there. Not so much shading because this is a really dark ink but I think if you know in in uh, in a lower lighting situation you could easily mistake this ink for a black and uh, yeah it's just a nice one to use um, like I say I have a few other blue black inks as well 
and they tend to be a little bit washed out and more gray than this one the turquoise um, like i said very similar to the konpeki but definitely its own color very nice shading on the edges there i enjoy that in an ink um, perhaps a tiny tiny bit of sheen uh, but not not that much um, you can see the shading on the wear and gold paper there on the on the swatch then moving on to the brilliant red and this is an interesting color I, I would not necessarily call this red if I see it it's, it's more of an orange pink right uh, I don't know what do you think let me know in the comments what this color looks like but it's for me definitely more of an of a deep orange um, but regardless of the name it, there's beautiful shading um, so I think this ink will do really well with a broader nib um, perhaps a stub nib I should I should try that and in the sunlight we can see not um, maybe a bit of sheen but not really um, much comparing the pink and the red um, you can see that it's definitely not pink although when you look at the brilliant red on its own it appears to have a pink quality to it so the pelican pink definitely has uh, a lot of shading there i don't think there's any sheen really to talk about but even on the writing you can see on the edges of the letters you can see the the shading there which is very nice the brilliant brown which is probably my favorite of all of these colors um, it, yeah it just does so well with a broad nib lots of shading um, even in the writing sample again you can see it there uh, very lovely ink and definitely one of my favorites the dark green I think it's not so dark like I said it, perhaps this is the difference then between a dark green and a, um, a green black uh, this is definitely not a green black but it's dark enough uh, the shading on the edges really nice tiny bit of sheen on the edges but not not that much um, actually I think it's just a really good everyday green the violet uh, I think quite a bit of shading and sheen especially on the endless paper you see that on the wearing goal it's almost like it has a sort of a velvety look to it which is interesting uh, I like that you, you feel like you want to touch it um, really beautiful the way that it's it's developed we can see the difference between the two papers as well so what it, what paper you use definitely brings out the quality of the ink well those are my pelican inks for now thank you so much for watching please do like uh, the video and subscribe and i will see you next time thank you